Cumi ancient Greek, Chime Romanized, Cume or Kimai Cumai or Kaima Cuma, Italian, Cuma was the first ancient Greek colony on the mainland of Italy, founded by settlers from Euboea in the 8th century BC and soon becoming one of the strongest colonies. It later became a rich Roman city, the remains of which lie near the modern village of Cuma, a frazione of the commune Bacoli in the metropolitan city of Naples, Campania, Italy. The Archaeological Museum of the Campi Flegrei in the Aragonese Castle contains many finds from Cumi. <laughs> Early history The oldest archaeological finds by Emil Stevens in 1896 date to 900–850 BC and more recent excavations have revealed a Bronze Age settlement of the pit culture people and later dwellings of Iron Age peoples whose memory was preserved as cave dwellers named Sumerians, among whom there was already an oracular tradition. The Greek settlement was founded in the 8th century BC by emigrants from cities of Eritrea and Chalchi in Euboea. The Greeks were already established at nearby Pithecusae modern Ischia and were led to Cumi by the joint Oasists founders, Megasthenes of Chalchi and Hippocles of Simi. The site chosen was on the hill and later Acropolis of Monte di Cuma surrounded on one side by the sea and on the other by particularly fertile ground on the edge of the Campanian plain. While continuing their maritime and commercial traditions, the settlers of Cumi strengthened their political and economic power by exploitation of the land and extended their territory at the expense of neighboring peoples. The colony thrived and in the 8th century it was already strong enough to send Perriers to found Zankel in Sicily, and another group to found Tridea in Achaia, Pausanias was told. Cuma established its dominance over almost the entire Campanian coast up to Punta Campanella over the 7th and 6th centuries BC, gaining sway over Puteoli and Misenum. The colony spread Greek culture in Italy and introduced the Euboean alphabet, a dialect of Greek and a variant of which was adapted and modified by the Etruscans and then by the Romans and became the Latin alphabet still used worldwide today. According to Dionysus, Cumi was at that time celebrated throughout all Italy for its riches, power, and all the other advantages, as it possessed the most fertile part of the Campanian plain and was mistress of the most convenient havens round about Misenum. The growing power of the Cumian Greeks led many indigenous tribes of the region to organize against them, notably the Dani and Orunchi with the leadership of the Capuan Etruscans. This coalition was defeated by the Cumians in 524 BC under the direction of Aristodemus. The glorious victories of the colony increased its prestige, so much so that according to Diodorus Siculus, it was usual to associate the whole region of the Phlegraean fields with Cumian territory. At this time the Roman Senate sent agents to Cumi to purchase grain in anticipation of a siege of Rome. Then in 505 BC Aristodemus led a Cumian contingent to assist the Latin city of Aresia in defeating the Etruscan forces of Clusium see war between Clusium and Aresia and having become popular with the people he overthrew the aristocratic faction and became a tyrant himself. The city and Acropolis walls were built from 505 BC, as well as the two temples on the Acropolis and the Sibyl's Cave. Further contact between the Romans and the Cumians occurred during the reign of Aristodemus. Lucius Tarquinius Superbus, the last legendary king of Rome, lived his life in exile with Aristodemus at Cumi after the Battle of Lake Regillus and died there in 495 BC. Livy records that Aristodemus became the heir of Tarquinius, and in 492 when Roman envoys travelled to Cumi to purchase grain, Aristodemus seized the envoys' vessels on account of the property of Tarquinius which had been seized at the time of Tarquinius' exile. Eventually the exiled nobles and their sons were able to take possession of Cumi and Aristodemus was assassinated in 490 BC. The combined fleets of Cumi and Syracuse on Sicily defeated the Etruscans at the Battle of Cumi in 474 BC. Cumi founded Neapolis in 470 BC. The Temple of Apollo sent the revered Sibylline books to Rome in the 5th c. BC. Also Rome obtained its priestesses who administered the important cult of Ceres from the Temple of Demeter in Cumi. Ozcan and Roman Cumi The Greek period at Cumi came to an end in 421 BC, when the Oscans allied to the Samnites broke down the walls and took the city, ravaging the countryside. Some survivors fled to Neapolis. 
The walls on the Acropolis were rebuilt from 343 BC. Cumi came under Roman rule with Capua and in 338 BC was granted partial citizenship, a civitas signed suffragio. In the Second Punic War, in spite of temptations to revolt from Roman authority, Cumi withstood Hannibal's siege, under the leadership of Tib. Sempronius Gracchus, the city prospered in the Roman period from the 1st c. BC along with all the cities of Campania and especially the Bay of Naples as it became a desirable area for wealthy Romans who built large villas along the coast. The central baths and the amphitheater are built. During the civil wars Cumi was one of the strongholds that Octavian used to defend against Sextus Pompey. Under Augustus extensive public building works and roads were begun and in or near Cumi several road tunnels were dug, one through the Monte di Cumi linking the Forum with the port, the Grotta di Cocchio one kilometre long to Lake Averno and a third, the Crypta Romana, 180 metres long between Lake Lucrino and Lake Averno. The temples of Apollo and Demeter were restored. The proximity to Puteoli, the commercial port of Rome and to Misenum, the naval fleet base, also helped the region to prosper. Another very important innovation was the construction of the Great Sereno Aqueduct, the Aqua Augusta supplying many of the cities in the area from about 20 BC. Domitians via Domitiana provided an important highway to the Via Appia and thence to Rome from 95 AD. The early presence of Christianity in Cumi is shown by the 2nd century AD work The Shepherd of Hermas, in which the author tells of a vision of a woman, identified with the church, who entrusts him with a text to read to the presbyters of the community in Cuma. At the end of the 4th century, the Temple of Zeus at Cumi was transformed into a Christian basilica. The first historically documented bishop of Cumi was Adeodatus, a member of a synod convoked by Pope Hilarius in Rome in 465. Another was Missinus, who was one of the two legates that Pope Felix III sent to Constantinople and who were imprisoned and forced to receive communion with Patriarch Acacius of Constantinople in a celebration of the Divine Liturgy in which Peter Mongoose and other Myophysites were named in the diptychs, an event that led to the Acacian Schism. Missinus was excommunicated on his return but was later rehabilitated and took part as Bishop of Cumi in two synods of Pope Symmachus. Pope Gregory the Great entrusted the administration of the Diocese of Cumi to the Bishop of Misenum. Later, both Misenum and Cumi ceased to be residential sees and the territory of Cumi became part of the Diocese of Aversa after the destruction of Cumi in 1207. Accordingly, Cumi is today listed by the Catholic Church as a titular see, under Roman rule, so-called Quiet Cumi was peaceful until the disasters of the Gothic Wars 535 to 554, when it was repeatedly attacked, as the only fortified city in Campania aside from Neapolis, Belisarius took it in 536, Todila held it, and when Narses gained possession of Cumi, he found he had won the whole treasury of the Goths. In 1207, forces from Naples, acting for the boy king of Sicily, destroyed the city and its walls, as the stronghold of a nest of bandits. Topic. Archaeology Despite the abandonment of the area of Cumi due to the formation of marshes, the memory of the ancient city remained alive. The ruins, although in a state of neglect, were later visited by many artists and with the repopulation of the area due to land reclamation, short excavation campaigns were made. The first excavations date to 1606 when 13 statues and two marble bas reliefs were found. Later finds included the large statue of Jupiter from the Masseria del Gigante exhibited at the National Archaeological Museum of Naples. However, after the discovery of the Vesuvian sites, the attention of the Bourbon explorers was diverted there and the Cumi area was abandoned and plundered of numerous finds, which were then sold to private individuals. A first campaign of systematic excavations took place between 1852 and 1857 under Prince Leopoldo, brother of Ferdinando II of the two Sicilies when the area of the Masseria del Gigante and some necropoles were explored. Later Emilio Stevens was given the concession and worked at Cumi between 1878 and 1893, completing the excavation of the necropolis, even though news of the various finds led to a continuous looting of the area. A disaster occurred between 1910 and 1922 when draining of Lake Lacola caused part of the necropolis to be destroyed. The explorations of the Acropolis started in 1911, bringing to light the Temple of Apollo. 
Between 1924 and 1934 Amadeo Mayeri and Vittorio Spinazzola investigated the Temple of Jupiter, the Cave of the Sibyl and the Crypta Romana, while between 1938 and 1953 the lower city was explored. A chance discovery occurred in 1992 when during the construction of a gas pipeline near the beach a Temple of Isis was discovered. In 1994 the Kime project was activated for the restoration of the site. Excavation of the Tholos tomb was completed, first partly explored in 1902. In the area of the Forum a basilica-shaped building, the Aula Silana, was discovered, while along the coastline three maritime villas were found. Since 2001 the CNRS has been excavating a necropolis dating from 6th to 1st C. BC outside the Porta Mediana, in June 2018 a painted tomb dating to the 2nd century BC and depicting a banquet scene was discovered. City development The ancient city was divided into two zones, namely the Acropolis and the lower part on the plains and the coast. The Acropolis was accessible only from the south side and it was on this area that the first nucleus of the city developed crossed by a road called Via Sacra leading to the main temples. The road began with two towers, one of which collapsed with part of the hill and the other was restored in the Byzantine era and is still visible. The lower city developed from the Samnite period and to a greater extent during the Roman Age. The lower city was defended by walls and during the Greek Age the Acropolis had probably the same type of defenses, even if the remains today dating back to the 6th century BC are only on the southeastern part of the hill perhaps also used as retaining walls of the ridge. In the 6th C, BC temples were built in Tufa, wood and terracotta. Columns, cornices and capitals were made of yellow tufa, roofs and architraves of wood and to protect the overhang, terracotta tiles and elaborate antifix decorations. When the city was allied with the Romans in 338 BC a new temple was built with exceptional painted friezes and ornamentation which have been discovered though the temple was destroyed after a few decades by fire. Between the Punic Wars and the adoption of Latin as the official trading language 180 BC, the city walls were restored and a large stadium built west of the Porta Mediana. The central baths were built and major work was done on the Acropolis temples. From the end of the second C, BC Cumi's architecture became increasingly Romanized. The Augustan Age saw many fine new buildings in the city such as the Basilica or Solon Aula. South of the Forum, decorated with polychrome marble. Water supply to the town was increased by an extension to the town of the Great Sereno Aqueduct, the Aqua Augusta, after 20 BC and paid for by local benefactors, the Luce family, praetors of the city, who also built an elaborate nymphium in the Forum as well as several other monuments and buildings. In the first C, A.D. the Temple of the Portico was built, now embedded in a farmhouse. Topic. Monuments The visible monuments include Temple of Diana Capitoline Temple of Jupiter, Juno and Minerva or Zeus Temple of Isis Temple of Demeter Temple of Apollo The Acropolis Arco Felice The Forum Grotta di Cocchio Crypta Romana Miseria del Giganti Topic. Arco Felice The Arco Felice was a 20 meters high monumental entrance to the city built in a cut through Monte Grillo which Domitian made in 95 AD to avoid the long detour imposed by the Via Appia, and allow easier access to Cumi along what was later called the Via Domitiana while the bridge also carried a road along the ridge of the hill. It was built of brick and tiled in marble, and surmounted by two rows of arches of lighter concrete covered with brick. The piers had three niches on both sides where statues were placed. The Via Domitiana, whose paving is still perfectly preserved and is in continuous use today, connected to the Via Appia, the artery of communication with Rome, as well as with Pozzuoli and Naples. The arch probably replaced a smaller gate from Greek times and in a higher position. Topic. Crypta Romana 
The Crypta Romana is a tunnel dug into the Tufa under the Kuma Hill, crossing the Acropolis in an east-west direction, giving an easier route from the city to the sea. Its construction is part of the set of military enhancement works built by Agrippa for Augustus and designed by Lucius Coxaeus Octus in 37 BC, including the construction of the new Portus Iulius and its connection with the port of Cumi through the so-called Grotta di Cocchio and the Crypta Romana itself. With the displacement of the fleet from Portus Iulius to the port of Miseno in 12 BC and the end of the civil war between Octavia and Mark Antony in 31 BC the tunnel lost its strategic value. The Forum entrance was made monumental with four statue niches in 95 AD at the same time as the Arco Felice was built. An avalanche closed the sea entrance in the Third Sea. After 397 it was reopened. In the Christian age it was used as a cemetery area. In the Sixth Sea, the Byzantine general Narsi tried to use it to reach the city during the Siege of Cumi, but weakened the structure and a large section of the vault collapsed. It was brought to light between 1925 and 1931 by the archaeologist Amadeus Mayeri. Topic: Sculpture. Topic: Mythology. Cumi is perhaps most famous as the seat of the Cumian Sibyl. Her sanctuary is now open to the public. In Roman mythology, there is an entrance to the underworld located at Avernus, a crater lake near Cumi, and was the route Aeneas used to descend to the underworld. <laughs> <laughs> Diocese of Cuma e. Not to be confused with the namesake Kuma Aeolus in Asia Minor a bishopric was established around 450 AD. In 700 it gained territory from the suppressed diocese of Miseno. In 1207 it was suppressed itself, its territory being divided and merged into the Roman Catholic Diocese of Aversa and Roman Catholic Diocese of Pozzuoli. Resident bishops. Saint Micenzio 300 Reynaldo 1073 1078 Giovanni 1134 1141 Gregorio 1187 Leone 1207 Topic Titular C In 1970 the diocese was nominally restored as a Latin titular C so far, it has had the following incumbent, of the lowest episcopal class with a single archiepiscopal exception. Titular Bishop Louis Marie Joseph de Corriges d'Ustu, the 2nd of September 1970, the 10th of December 1970. Titular Archbishop Eduardo Pecoreo, the 28th of December 1971, the 9th of August 1986. Titular Bishop Julio Maria Elias Montoya, Friars Minor, OFM, Apostolic Vicar of Apostolic Vicariate of El Beni, Bolivia, the 17th of November 1986. Topic Gallery. Topic See also. Grotta di Cocchio Fusaro Lake Topic Notes and References Topic External Links Official Website in Italian Giga Catholic with Residential Titular incumbenti biography links.